So we are looking at creating a new project with two repos, front end and back end. And we'll look at how to do some authentication with JWT web token stuff, because since we're not in one repo, we can't use sessions, uh, which is good and bad. Uh, I think it's more good than bad. And this is how I usually set my stuff up when I'm, uh, when I'm doing stuff. So in like the real, a real world situation, are you more likely to use the sessions or are you more likely to use something like this? More likely to use something like this sessions depend on things being in one place. And that is not always the case in the real world, especially when folks break stuff out into microservices or they have different clients on different platforms. They have a, you know, their web version, they have their mobile version, they have their Alexa version or whatever, or they have, you know, they have um, stuff hosted on you know, CDNs or they have it on uh, distributed servers and stuff. So it makes it much more flexible architecture wise to do it this way. Sessions depend on everything being like one big chunk, which again has some advantages and it's when it's your own project, it's a matter of taste. Uh, my taste is, is this just because of the, the flexibility and it doesn't tie you to uh, one, one thing. Um, and JWT slash token stuff is relatively platform agnostic. It's a technology that's around in a lot of places. So if you do want to switch out a backend for something or want to move your stuff, I think it's easier to manage this way. Um, there are drawbacks to this way as well, but uh, this is what we're looking at. Uh, but yeah, in, in the real world, that's what you're going to be seeing most of the time, in my experience. I've definitely experienced both both ways, so it's good to know both ways. All right, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here, see what we have. And I'll move you all over to the other screen so I can see you. So this is, let's chat, let's chat. So I uh, took a few minutes and dashed out a quick readme here. There's Slack, hello everybody. Cool. Uh, so this is a, a project that's been on my uh, backlog for a while. It's a dumb thing where basically you post a project that you're working on. It's an accountability kind of thing. Post a project you're working on, say, ah, oh, I can finish it by the end of this weekend. And then say, no, we're going to finish it tonight. And then you get to see if you do it or not. So it's a, it's a silly accountability kind of thing that uh, I've got from uh, uh, role-playing game developer people. <laughs> so uh, I wrote up this little readme with user stories and whatnot. So basically we're going to create this do a repo. We're going to create some login stuff and maybe as we go forward, I'll add some stuff, but the login stuff is the important thing here. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to open up my terminal and I'm going to get to creating some stuff. So let's go repo. Awesome. So I'm going to make two, two repos. One's going to be my front end repo. That's going to be a react application. One's going to be my back end repo. And that's going to be a Rails application. Let's do the front end first. Why not? Uh, let's make, I'll do NPX now. Create React app. And it's going to be called uh, FFB for short. FFB front end. Cool. So while that's cooking away there, open up another window. And I will do a Rails new FFB back end. And it's going to be API only. I think that's the right flag. And that'll crank away there. Big. Terminal freeze. Oh my gosh. Has that ever happened before? My terminal froze. <laughs> awesome. Crazy. Okay. Can I quit it even? There we go. Cancel. I don't know what's happening there. Wow, it's freaking out. Okay. 
Can I go to my other tab? No, I can't. Cancel. Wow. Okay, let's see. Can I make a new tab? Make a new window. Terminal is misbehaving. Oh, no. Wow, what is going on here? Is it still making those things? Can I do a bundle install here? Maybe. Okay, that looks all right. We're still, React is still working on there. Cool. So I'm going to go ahead and code this so we can see it, the back end. And I'll also code the front end. So now I have two editors and two different or two um, projects. Yes. I don't know what's happening here. Terminate. No. Okay, let's close this one out. This one's still working. Oh, no. What's happening? <laughs> I'm just going to let that sit for a second. Let me close this one. Why is... Oh, geez. This is bad news. I know what Terminal's doing. Okay, that one's still cooking. Um. You can Rails new, then bundle install, then code. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Let's see. Oh, I don't want to look at my whole repo. I want to look at that. Yeah. Mm, don't care about that. Great. Um, sweet. Front end. Fantastic. Um, should be all NPM installed, and I will code that up. So do I have both of those? Yeah. Dot. All right. And just to make sure, be install there. Cool. So <laughs> we've got all of our things here. So uh, here's our backend repo. This is our API only backend repo. And I'll just have to right here. Here is our front end repo. This is our React only repo. Turn right there. And are we good here? Great. <laughs> Close that window. Wow, terminal. Okay. I just won't let that go there. So here we go. I am going to look at uh, what I need to do here for my tasks. So, oh, actually, let me just copy and paste this into my actual project. Mm, so let's put it in the front end. Here's my readme loop. Great. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, initialize these. I have a alias um, that just says uh, git init, git add, and git commit uh, init because I do that so much. So I'm just going to let me double check. Is there a git archive here already? Yes, there is. So I'm just going to do that anyway. Um, it's already there. Great. That's all committed. I'm going to do the same thing here. Great. And I will go ahead and create those on um, GitHub if I can. Where's my, where's my, my windows are freaking out right now. Okay, cool. Um, GitHub. Here we go. So I'm going to create two repos here. I'm going to create a template. Me, I have a really front end. And can be public. Great, 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 great. And I can just add the origin there. And then I go to the right one. Here's my front end. Cool. If I reload that, should have it. Fantastic. And I'll create one for the back end as me. And that's all good. And add the remote to the back end. And Awesome, cool. Now we are set up to roll. Uh, probably 
yeah well, I'll, I'll do this as we go along the readme for the back end i'm just going to update with the api documentation so it's going to have the, the the login and the indices and all that stuff um let's look at what the stories look like so i want to uh make a user so i'm going to have a uh, register route i'm going to have a login route i'm going to have a logout route I'm going to have a uh, user route so I can see who I am, uh, routes for projects, and all that stuff. So we're only going to concern ourselves with the login stuff right now. So um, we will be using JWTs for that. So let me talk a little bit about what that means. So sessions are usually kept with a cookie on the front end so basically the server is running the server is a program that runs continuously and accepts requests when you have sessions that set up and a user logs in with the session basically what it does it creates a uh, object a session object in rails at least um, and in a few other ones express one or not it creates an object associated with that user and it returns when you uh, log in it, the request returns with a cookie with a uh, you know a encrypted value or a hash value that lets the server know hey when i get that cookie it basically has roughly it has a lookup table internally that says when i get this big string of stuff um, grab this object that's associated with this user um, if someone else gets your cookie and sends it along they can grab your session um, Normally, that's not a problem because of modern browsers, but uh, it is a concern in the big term. But basically, creates an object that you can then just dump stuff in <coughs> for your session that persists because it sits in the server and the server is uh, continuously running. So it has that there. So if the server restarts, sessions go away. If you have to you know, bump the server for whatever reason, or you can set them to expire or whatnot. Um, and it requires them to be on the same uh, server as the client there. So with token-based authentication, it's similar, except we are not storing stuff persistently in a session. Basically, JWTs or uh, web tokens are a uh, an encoded, encrypted um, string that gets sent back and forth. So when you log in, it'll send this big long token and it looks, it has a specific format. Um, yeah, great. Uh, so it keeps a bunch of information in it. Uh, let's see if there's an easy. Yeah, so basically it's broken into three parts. It has uh, the first part that says what kind of token it is. The second part has some uh, information that you're sending along with it. And the last part is some verification stuff, some, uh, some uh, what you call, it? Uh, encrypted signature. Oh yeah, signature. So it's this middle part that we are mostly concerned of. And basically what it does is on the server, you have a secret key. You use that secret key to create a token and that's going to encode some information with that token. Often it will just be the username so you encode that username in the token, send it to the client, the client hangs onto it. You can store it in a cookie, actually store it in local storage, as long as you're storing it somehow in a secure way, it's fine. So the one big change from a sessions is that we need to explicitly send over the token in a, uh, in a header, um, a bearer token header so that the server can a know that's getting a token and then b use the secret on the server side to decode that token and say oh hey i'm that user now i can do stuff associated with that user um great so that's the like super 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 high level of that what does that mean for us that means that we have uh, some work to do <laughs> <laughs> um, so basically, we need to set this up in two places. We need to 
be able to generate tokens on our back end and we need to be able to catch and send tokens on our front end. So uh, what does this look like? So we need to go, let's do the back end first because that's, eh, I don't know what the most straightforward part, but it's a good place to start. So we need to uh, set up a few things first and I'm gonna refer to a project that I already have just to make sure I'm not missing anything. Um, so we need uh, the crypt here because we are still, uh, whether you're using tokens or sessions or anything else, you're still going to need to do to, to authenticate a password. And we're going to do that in basically the same way. The user is going to send over a password in plain text, uh, username and password. We're going to encrypt the password with bcrypt and compare it to a crypted uh, digest on the server side if they match. Cool. We'll send our token over. Um, I also need to add, I don't think it's in here. Awesome. Yeah. So I'm also going to add a um, JWT gem. Uh, and I think that's just JWT. And uh, let me get the version over here. Two, 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 two. Um, squiggly to two, not two. Cool. I think that'll work. So uh, we need bcrypt turned on. We need JWT turned on. I think that is all we need for that. Um, yeah, great. So let's go ahead and create our um, user model since we're gonna need to do that. So our user model is going to need to have a username. It's gonna need to, where's my... Uh, yeah, so we'll have a username. We'll start off with username and name, um, and it will need the uh, password digest as well. So we're going to need uh, the username. We're going to need the digest, uh, and it's going to have some associations. We'll worry about those in a moment. So let's see. Um, I don't want to start this. Yeah, OK. So I'm just going to go to my back end here, and I'm going to generate a model for my user, I guess. Um, so I'm going to generate, um, uh, do I want to do a model or a resource? I'm going to do, a, I'm just going to do a model for starters. Um, so I'm going to model a user, right? And I'm going to add a username, password, uh, username and password. Digest. Right. Right. Cool. Um, here we go. Migration generator. Da, 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 da. Model. Cool. So I'm going to generate the model here. Do I want to do the model or the migration? Let me just start off with the migration, actually. Um, so I'm going to say uh, migration, uh, add user, and yeah, I'll start that way. Cool. And we should have a user in here. Fantastic. So. Uh, for that user, I am going to just manually add all the stuff here. Uh, I'm going to say on our, oh, we need a create table. Users. And with my table, I'm going to do what? I'm going to create a string. That's my uh, username. Yeah. And I'm going to have a string. That's my Password digest. Just, uh, do I want to add anything else in here? Name, yeah, let's do all of that stuff. String, uh, name, URL, and I'm gonna need ID. I'll just throw the IDs in here, projects. Cool. That's a lot of stuff, but we'll, we'll get there. Sweet. So let me do my uh, migrate or uh, create or uh, migrate. Yeah. Cool. So now we have a user. Sweet. So we have that uh, user digest there. Great. Schema looks like that. Fantastic. We did it. All right. Um, 
name, correct name, correct name. Awesome, cool. So we're going to go ahead and add in. Um, let's do the controller stuff first, and we'll add the routes in after. So in uh, in our over here in our uh, app, we're going to need. Um, I should have just made the resource, I guess. Anyway, let's make a. Uh, oh, it's raining. Cool. Uh, let's make our model for our user here first. Actually, so it's going to be our uh, user, RB. And let's see, this is going to be an application record, right? Uh, sweet application record. Spell that right. Yeah. Um, Cool, and we're going to uh, validate. Um, it's going to need username, and it's going to let's validate the. Um, I don't need to validate the other thing. So yeah, um, username is going to be unique, though, right? Yes, uniqueness. Uh, else. Cool. So there's our model. And I'm going to add one thing up here that we're going to build in just a second. And that's our um, authentication thing where it has secure password. And that's the bcrypty thing that will encrypt the password with the digest. So um, in our controller over here, let's make our user controller as well. Uh, users controller. Mm, users. Wait, let me go there. Cool. So in our users controller, um, this is going to come off of the application controller. So much easier to have a resource generated for you. <laughs> um, cool. So I'm going to need to add a um, create for this. And I'm going to need to write. OK. Um, let's actually, well, I'll just throw the create in here for now. Create. Um, so I'm going to create user. Uh, we'll just say user equals create user with the uh, user params and add some user params down here. And oh, come on. Uh, so here we're going to get grab our params. And we're going to require um, uh, in user. We're going to require. Uh, we're going to require a user. We're going to permit a username and name and password. I think that's all we'll do. Uh, and it's going to be password, not password digest, because that's we're taking the plain text password there. Um, cool. So uh, if the user is valid. So if it's uh, created everything all right, then we're going to render it out. Render JSON user user and it's created. Uh, otherwise, we're going to render out an error. Mm -hmm. Not created. Um, and we're going to add, uh, so we're going to have a authorized action in our application controller uh, so that anything the user does is going to be authorized. We're going to want to skip that when we're create because we can't create a user if, when we're logged in if we're not, we can't create a user 
if we're logged in, if the user's not created, you get it. Um, we want to be able to create a user when we're not logged in. So I'm going to uh, skip, skip before, before action, skip before action. That's going to be uh, authorized. Only for create. I want to in the right place. Only create. Oh, that looks all right. Cool. So now we're going to drop some stuff in the application controller because that's where all our authorized stuff is going to happen. Um, so buckle up. <laughs> um, sweet. So we're going to make our authorized function here. And since our users controller inherits application controller, it's going to have access to that. Um, and so we're going to want this to run before any user stuff. So we're going to say before action, uh, macro authorized. So that's our, our pairing with this. Anytime we do a user action or any anytime we do an action uh, with the application controller, it's going to need to be authorized. Um, right now we can just return true and everything will be great. Um, it's going to skip that when we're creating a user here. And this is the same for our session-based authorization just for review. So um, we're gonna need a couple steps here, right? We're going to uh, check if we're logged in. Uh, logged in, and we'll do some stuff here if we're not logged in. Um, we'll render an error. Then, uh, and status is unauthorized unless it's logged in. And that should be like that. Yeah, cool. So um, unless it's logged in, it's going to throw an error for us. Great. So we need to write, write our logged in method. Logged in? Question mark? Cool. So this is going to return true or false depending on whether or not they're logged in. And uh, basically, I'm going to check if I have uh, a, a current user in my token. So the we're going to use a little bit of a trick here. So I can just say a uh, current user. That's going to give me current user via a function. I'm going to turn this into a Boolean by doing a bang bang on it, not not. And so basically this takes um, any value and turns it into a Boolean. So it's when you do a not on a value in Ruby, it turns it to the opposite Boolean value of it, whether it's a Boolean or a string or nil or whatever. And doing two nots is the same as identity. So this is just turning our current user that we're getting into a Boolean so we know that we're logged in. So let's write that current user function. Uh, and so here's where we start getting into the token stuff. So basically, I want to decode my token that I'm getting. Um, and I want to grab the token or grab the username out of it. Because remember, we're not just saying, we're not just using a session where we're identifying uh, ourselves with a unique hash. We are actually encoding some information including the username in our token and sending it back sending it over and they'll send it back it's secure because you can't decode the the token uh, i should say encoding and decoding instead of encrypting and decrypting um it should be should should be secure because our, our secret is on the server if the server is compromised we have all sorts of other problems so uh, yeah so this is relatively secure Someone can capture the token in transit, or they can grab it off of the user's computer, and they won't really be able to get anything useful out of it unless it's decoded on the server, which we're going to do right now. So um, current user is going to, uh, we're going to make a decoded token. Uh, I, I have a quick question real fast before you yeah. go any further. Yeah, go um, for it. So, uh, the, I just want to make sure I understand that the double bang thing. So that logged in function. So it returns true if the if there is a current user and false if it's not. And that's, that's what correct. you mean yeah. turning it into Boolean does? 
Yep. Yeah. So current user is going to be basically the, the username. So it's going to be a string. And we want to turn that string into a true. And so the double knot is going to turn it into a true. And that's just checking if it's present or if it's not. That's right. OK. OK. Yeah, you got it. Um, so we're going to write a decoded token function that's going to uh, decode our token. And um, we're going to grab the uh, user name or the user ID, I guess. Uh, we'll say user ID equals decoded token. And uh, it's going to when you decode a token, it's going to give us an array. And that is going to have an object on it. And we're going to have the user ID in it. Okay. And this is, uh, this is just how we're going to be constructing it when we send it along. Um, and I'm going to set a class variable. So our, in our uh, controller here, user at user is going to be um, user find by <coughs> say ID. So this is setting a class variable on, uh, it's going to be the user controller. So when we want to use the user, we'll already have it set up. Um, and it's going to be returning that. So it's not it's not returning a string, it's actually returning an object uh, that's going to be turning into true. So, uh, and so that gives us, once, once the token is decoded, it's grabbing the ID of the user, grabbing the model object of that user and putting it in a class variable so we can access it in our controller easily so we don't just just so we don't have to do that work uh later on down the road um cool let's write our decoded token function so this is going to uh and this is where the real jwt work happens um basically we're going to look for an authorization header uh we're going to and so headers are just key value pairs that are sent in the HTTP head section. Uh, so it'll say authorization bearer or something or other. So we're going to grab that out of our uh, out of our header. We're going to split out the value and we're going to use our JWT gem to decode it. Um, actually, let me grab the header over here uh, just to be clear. Um, off header. And I'm just going to return the uh, request. Cool. So let's just return that. So when we get an HTTP request, it has a header and a body. We're just grabbing the authorization string out of that. So uh, if we have an auth header, we are going to do what? We are going to grab the, um, the token out of it. Um, so we're going to, so it's going to look like bearer and then the big token. Uh, if you look at the, do I still have it up? So I should say, uh, yeah, so this is what the, uh, thanks. Uh, so this is what the actual string in the header looks like. So token is going to look like this here. So when the request gets sent over in the header, it's going to have a line that says authorization bearer and then blah, blah, blah. So we're going to take this, we're going to split it on this first space here, and then we're going to grab the token. So split, uh, we're going to split on space, and we're just going to yeah, grab the one index thing, the second thing. So zero is going to be bearer. Um, cool. So we're going to do a little, um, block here to decode it. Uh, I'm gonna begin, um, oops. So I'm going to do JWT decode, decode. I'm going to decode the token and, uh, there's going to be a secret password here. Uh, right now it's a secret password. Um, let me put it up here. I'll say uh, secret is uh, cool. So we're going to decode it with the secret. Um, 
get what this is. Um, Wooby. Uh, here we go. Token decode. What is that looking for? Where is that error? Let's see, what does that true do? I forget. Mm -hmm. yeah, I don't remember. Uh, well, it needs a true there for some reason. I'm sure. What is it? I cannot remember. Um, but we're going to give it the algorithm it's using. Uh, algorithm, and that is our, what is it? HS256. Um, great. So this is going to decode this um, and return the decoded value. Um, otherwise, we're going to rescue from that error that we saw there briefly. Uh, rescue our JWT decode error. And we're just going to return nil. So uh, if there is any, no thanks. No thanks. Uh, so if there's any trouble decoding it, it's just going to bomb out and return nil instead of crashing a server <laughs> or throwing an error there. Um, and so again, this is taking the the encrypted value or encoded value. Uh, where is it? It's going to take the encoded value that looks like this. It's going to use our uh, secret and it's going to decode it into our uh, array here. That's going to have uh, the one thing in it and. Uh, I'll, I'll put some traces in here or puts in here when we run it so you can see what's going on uh, as we do it. So this is the whole decode thing. Um, I It only looks easy because I'm copying it from <laughs> one that I already built. Uh, there's a lot of moving parts. And when you do it for the first time yourself, uh, it takes a while to, a, I mean, if you're not working off of a template or uh, one that you've done before, it takes a while to figure it out how to do it. And then uh, there's a lot of fiddling around just getting it working at all. Um, this is a fantastic place to practice your kind of thread pulling debugging. Where you know, we're sending a request, the request needs to be authorized. So if it's not create, we can see that it's going to run authorized before any action. So here's our authorized method. It's going to check for logged in. Logged in is going to check for a current user. Current user is going to check for a decoded token. Decoded token is going to look for an auth header. Auth header is going to look for stuff in the uh, authorization header in the request. So if there is an auth header, it's going to grab the token and it's going to decode that token and return it to here. We're going to grab the user ID out of that token and find the user out of it and putting in a class variable that's going to re return true if there is a current user false if it's not and if it is awesome if not we're going to throw this error back a lot of stuff but fortunately because it's broken out like this it is relatively easy to debug so i guarantee this is probably not going to work the first time guarantee probably so how do we debug this you can do prize in here. I usually just like, oh, okay, start up here. You know, puts off header. Um, it's a bunch of garbage, so I can see where I am. So when I try and decode a token, it's going to throw the off header out here. If I'm not getting an off header, great. I know where it's breaking. Otherwise, I'll do a puts down here or puts down here. And so I can... There's a lot of surface area to put debugging statements or prize if you like that. So you can see exactly what the values of everything are and you can see if they're what you're expecting. Uh, I feel like this should work. Um, probably will not. <laughs> uh, so we can do some debugging along the way. I'll just come up this out for now because we probably need it later. Uh, or I'll, I'll leave it in so we can see what that looks like. So secret can be anything, uh, just should not be like, password. Uh, it, and this should actually probably be in an environment variable if you're checking it into GitHub. So it's not viewable in your repo, but we can talk about that in a moment, in a little while. Um, yeah, go for it. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
that algorithm part right there, that SH256, is that will always be that number? For us, it will be, yeah. There's a bunch of different um, algorithms for encoding and decoding JWTs. Oh, I see. And you're just getting it from this JWT site. Yeah. Um, and here is uh, a list of <laughs> algorithms on here. Uh, 256 is uh, fine. Um, but there's a bunch. As long as you're using the same one to encode and decode, you're good. Uh, but okay. you can use any of the ones that are available. Great. Thank you. Yeah. And they, if you're a uh, you know, a crypto guy, you can have strong opinions about which ones are better or faster or more secure. Um, at, at this point, whatever works is good. Uh, I had a quick question as well. You kind of covered it. So you put the the secret into like a git ignore file and then access that from... Yeah, yeah. So I would put it in a .env file and grab it out of that. And then when I deploy it, put the configure the variable in whatever. In, in a dot .what file? Uh, I forget, uh, however Rails does it. Um, in Express is what I'm used to using. I do a .env file and then bring it in there. Uh, I forget how to do it in Rails. I have to look it up. But yeah, basically you don't check it in. Uh, if I could just add to that real quick. Yeah, yeah. Um, Charlie, I think that there's some instructions on how to use a .env file um, on the phase five project um resources at the bottom it says like hiding a um um api key in ruby i think when you click on that it gives you some instructions on that yeah it uses awesome. the, thank you gem here so basically you uh do this install dot end there and then you can um yeah there's a few different ways to load it here um basically you you put this dot file in your repo uh ignore it so it doesn't get checked in and then you will be able to bring it bring it in so you uh you have it and it's not there so yeah you would set that environment variable uh, and then you can do the same when you host it on heroku or wherever else there's always a place to put environment variables that is not visible uh, so basically the most important thing is when you when you deploy or when you um put it in source control right now it doesn't really matter you can you can always change your secret um, just to get it working and then pull it out later. Important part is that other people don't see your secret, so they can't uh, decode your super secret application. Uh, again, for our purposes, no one's going to be hexering your stuff, so don't worry about it too much. But definitely before you deploy, we'll, we'll get that working. Um, awesome. Other questions? Cool. The, the flip side of all this stuff um, is actually encoding the token. So since we are looking for an encoded token to be sent over with a request, we want a way to also encode the token so we can send it over when we log in. And that is way easier. Uh, if we do encode token like this, so we're going to be using this and we're going to need a payload. Payload is going to be the object that we're putting in as the um, the, the payload, the, the values that we're keeping in there. What do they call it here? Uh, payload. So basically, we're going to send it an object that's going to be put in here and see. So it's just going to be an object with key value pairs. Right now, I'm just going to be doing user ID so we know which users logged in. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to JWT encode, code. We're going to uh, give it payload, and we're going to give it our secret. And that is it. <laughs> so that will take an object and our secret, and it will create this JWT string out of it. And when we log in, we're going to send that along with uh, as a response and we're gonna look for it when we're accepting requests. Um, this is all, it's not complicated, but it is complex. There's a lot of little moving pieces. Uh, it's pretty straightforward if you follow it through, but um, encryption, authorization, all that stuff, that is in the real world, like someone's whole ass job. Right now we're just doing it enough to get it working. In general, rolling your own, authorization is 
uh, amateur hour. Uh, I've done it myself many, many times, but generally in the real world, we're going to want to use some uh, more secure or managed authorization thing. So using, um, uh, oh, what's the acronym? Uh, you know, logging in with Twitter or LinkedIn or Google or whatever, Facebook. Um, what's the word? Oh, there's a the protocol that we used to do that, whatever it is, fix it in post. Um, <laughs> but this is going to be great for now. If you don't understand every little moving part, that's fine. There's, it takes a while to, I mean, it's just one more thing to learn. Encryption is a whole field of study. If you can just get it working and understand enough that like we're encoding and decoding something some way, um, that's fine. Don't worry about all of the you know, juicy details here. The details are juicy and really cool. If you want to dig into them, happy to talk about them at length. But for our purposes, just getting it working is totally fine. So that is just the mechanics of encoding and decoding JWTs. Any kind of high-level questions here before we jump into using these? I guess I have a little question. So this payload is just work is going to be whatever we pass yeah. into that method that we'll see. Yeah. So it can be the, okay. any, any object at all, uh, we are going to um, just probably put the user ID okay. in there. Okay. Yeah. Um, cool. Let me see what would be, what would be something to work on next here? Uh, see, the user's controller did that, did that. Um, let's make some routes, and then we'll we'll go ahead and fill fill those routes in. So um, those will be in config, right? Routes. Cool. So um, we're going to need a few things, and I'll go ahead and document these in my readme while we're here. Cool. Mm -hmm. uh, API docs. Awesome. So we're going to need a few things here. We're going to need, uh, we'll do the resources for the users. And we only want the create right now. Because we only have our create, not there. User controller. Oh, should that be create table? <laughs> Absolutely not. Uh, create. So we just want our create here for our users, and this will make sure that people can't do other stuff with them. So we're gonna need a few a few routes to do stuff. We're gonna need a login route, and that's gonna be a post. And so this is gonna take our information. It's gonna have our uh, username and password. And we're going to route that to uh, our authenticate. Create, sorry, authenticate, 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 auth, that's fine. Create. Um, we're going to want a, um, well, is that good enough? We're going to need a create. We have that already. Let's just do a login. We're going to need a logout too, but let's just do them one at a time. So I'm going to need a, off controller here. I think. So here I'm going to create. Um, check out here. Yeah, great. So here is our. Oh, come on. Here is our off controller. Herb. Herb. Yeah. Cool. And in our. What do we do there? Cool. So class controller and controller. Great. So um yeah, so in our routes, we're gonna go when we log in. So we're kind of muscling this into our wrists schema here uh, where posts are creates and all the stuff. Basically, 
like if you look at a session, I don't know how we've seen it before. Generally, when I think about it, when we're logging in, we're creating a new session or creating a new token. That's why it's a post in my brain. And so I'm going to make a create method in auth that says, hey, we're creating a new authentication thing. So uh, it's not class, it's dev create. So this is what's hooked up to our post. So when we just go to login and send it uh, a JSON object with our username and password, it's going to create a new authorization for us. That's how it works in my brain. Um, cool. So first of all, um, let's get our let's get our params set up first. How about that? Um, yeah, user login params. So we're gonna do params. We're gonna require a user object. Require user. And that is going to only permit a username, user name, and password. Cool. So uh, we're requiring a user object we pass in. We're, we're permitting, permitting uh, a username and password there. So first off, let's find our user. Um, and so it's going to be. Find by, uh, we're going to find my username. Rams. Cool. So, and we're throwing that in a class of variable. Um, do we need to throw in a class variable here? I don't think we do. Oh, no. Uh, that's, no, that'll be good. Yeah, because I know it'll stick there. Let me close that out. Um. Great. So if we have a user uh, and so we want to authenticate, right? Because we have our, uh, hmm. we're going to want to authenticate somehow. Um, do I have a authenticate in my user controller here? Let's see. Oh, no, it's going to be in the Yes, yes, yes. In the application controller, that's where our authenticate is. Nope, that's our authorized. <coughs> um, where are we putting that then? Let's see where that's coming from before we commit to it. Uh, user authenticate. Oh, that's coming from our, yeah, okay, great. So back here, um, we're going to user authenticate. And uh, I believe that is coming from our uh, Bcrypt. So that is when we've, in our model, when we say has secure password, this is a macro, which adds code to our class. And basically, it's, that's, that's the thing that's adding the authenticate to our user's controller. So Rails magic, um, there we go, uh, user authenticate. So basically, this is taking the um, username and password that is in the user and um, or it's we're going to be taking a password authenticating that user with it with the hash password with decrypted element uh, so we need do need to pass it in the um, password we're getting so um, uh, Mark I have a quick question if yeah. you don't mind yeah absolutely. um in this um, auth controller, we're, are we in here? What, what is action controller that we're, um, like class we have auth controller and then we have action controller at the very top? Mm -hmm. Is that where yeah. I'm just like, because I was thinking in my mind, I'm oh, like, is sorry. that supposed this to be? This should be application. application? Okay. Yeah. I was just wondering <laughs> where the connections. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Totally good. Thanks for catching that typo. Um, yeah, application controllers are our root controller and stuff um, that inherits from action controller. Uh, if we don't inherit from application controller, we don't get all these goodies. So we definitely want that. Thanks for calling that out. Um, awesome. So uh, we are going to. Um, so if we have a user and if the user is uh, authenticated, 
uh, we want to uh, create a token for it. So uh, let's do that. We have a code token because we are inheriting from application controller. Um, so cool. We want to um, just give it, uh, so this is going to be our payload that we're passing in. And I'm just going to give it the object that we're expecting with the user ID. Uh, user ID. Awesome. So that's our token. Uh, throwing in a class variable again so we can use it later if we want to. Um, yeah, so since we are guaranteed to have an ID on that user, since it's authenticated, uh, so we're getting that token. And now we want to send that token back to our uh, requester, our client. So we're just going to uh, render that JSON. And we're going to say user. Um, this one has a serializer for it. I don't want to bother with that right now. Let's see. Yeah, I do. Um, so we don't want to send back the all, the, all the, the, we definitely don't want to send back the hash password. So we want to make a serializer for this. So I'm just going to assume we have one and then we'll make it later. So we're going to call it a user serializer. And user, and we're going to pass back the token. And accepted. Cool. So uh, if we have a user, it has been authenticated with the hash password. Uh, we're going to create that JWT token, redundant, and send it back to the requester, our client, with the user information serialized to sanitize it a little bit with our token. Quick question for you. Yeah. Uh, why uh, here could you use JWT as lowercase and then the other instances where you used it, it was uppercase? Yeah, great question. Uh, so when we're using it as uppercase here, uh, this is referencing the gem that we have installed, um, which is confusingly installed lowercase. <laughs> uh, but that gives us this uppercase JWT class that has all these encode, decode uh, methods on it. This is just a key in the JSON that we're sending back. It could be oh, okay. it could be token, it could be, you know, pass card, whatever you want to call it, sandwich. Uh, we're just calling it lowercase WT because we feel like it. Cool. Thank you so much. Yeah. And so the only thing with that is that if it's sending back uh lowercase JWT in the JSON, client just needs to know that is the case, uh, which is a fantastic um time to uh, close all these that we're not using. Um, yeah, let's do this. Uh, our route, uh, login route is going to, uh, login route is going to uh, take a uh, accept JSON object with username and password. This uh, username, JSON, and uh, we turn JSON here. Yeah, great. Um, returns a JSON object with the um, user information. And so let's write that um, serializer so we can say that's true. So we want to return um, just the username username so we know who logged in. Uh, it's not going to return the password. Uh, it's going to return the email, well, not email, name name, um, and the user ID. Cool. Uh, and so now when we go to look at our readme, we're going to have a nice uh, documentation. So when we forget what we wrote, we can just go ahead and use it. Um, this is, uh, I always write this too late, I think. Um, occasionally, I'll be good and like write it before I start writing code uh, for all of my endpoints. Uh, it's so useful. It 
keeps you from having to dig through your code after you've written your API. But uh, as long as it's written, uh, that's that's good. Because and writing good documentation on your API is also great when people who are looking at your code for job interviews because they're like, oh, this person documents stuff. Okay, they are one hundred percent hired. Um, because no one wants to document anything ever. So let's see. Um, let's go back to our here. Um, why not serializers? Okay, let's make some serializers. And in our serializers, we're going to make a user serializer herb. And in that, we're going to say class. And that's coming from active model. Cool. And uh, the only thing we want to hear is uh, we're going to just return attribute. Uh, we're just returning the username and the name and the ID. The ID. Cool. So now we're making sure we're not sending back passwords or anything else. Uh, associations. No, no one needs to know that. Um, cool. In our routes, in our auth. Cool. So when we use that serializer there, it's going to send back just the information we need. Uh, great. Otherwise, we're going to get an error back. What does that error look like? That error looks like um, message. Um, password. And we're going to send a status back. Unauthorized. Cool. And let's put that in our um, What do we see? It says invalid username or password. And so we're just sending back this object here. We'll drop that right in there. Awesome. And now we know what error to expect. Cool. Um, I think that'll do that. So let's see, what do we have? We have a login route. We have our user hooked up. We have our authorization stuff hooked up. What am I missing? Am I missing anything important right now? Mm -hmm. Is that logged in? Great. Yeah, I feel like that's a good place to start. Let's check this in. building explodes we'll have it um cool i think i think this is good we ran our migration already right migrated cool um is there anything else we need to do before we start testing i don't think so i don't think so cool let's see um are we going to blow up when we start it up? Yeah, all right. Um, I didn't do my bundle install for the other stuff. Bundle. Nope, still no good. What do we got? Oh, boy. Mm. Do, 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 do. Create is not supported controller name. And where routing? I think you might have your route switched up, or maybe not. Hmm. Let me see. That looks okay. What did I do here? Resources, users only, only, haha, only create. That's what I need. Haha, -ha, there we go. Okay, cool. So what do we need to do now? Uh, let's take a look at our 
documentation. Um, cool. So I want to, ah, uh, you want to create a user too. Mm, user. Um, and so I'm going to do either API doesn't care what the model is. Uh, post. Oh, I should say this is post post user. So this is going to uh, user. So uh, we need to send what we need to send a username. We need to send, where were we? Mm -hmm. uh, validates username. We need a password. And we need a name, I think, that we started off with. And it will return um, our. Oops. Thank you. Stop. Stop. Uh, what are we returning here? We are returning. Controller. Mm, uh, we are returning the uh, just the user object. And that should have all the information. Uh, and returns user object. So uh, let's go ahead and pop over to Insomnia or Postman or whatever you like. Uh, we are running on localhost 3000. Um, cool, I don't know what this is. So I'm gonna say, user, cool. So we want to do what? We want to send over some JSON. We're gonna send over some JSON. JSON, great. And we are going to send over some information. As we can see from our docs, we need our username, password, and name. Username's gonna be major. And my name is Mark. Awesome. So um, I think that's all we need. We don't need to send any special headers. Application JSON. Let's see what blows up. Uh, I'm going to put that in there. Actually, in my off, where are we there? So many things. Mm, I'm gonna I'm gonna do what in my application control. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna uncomment this just so we can see what the tokens coming over looks like. Cool, sending, not found, errors, all sorts of good stuff. Um, post to users, that's what I want. Users, yeah, good, error. Um, cool, expecting end, all there, all sorts of broken stuff. Yeah, what did I do? My application controller. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Token, secret, true, algorithm, boom. What did I mess up there? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. That looks fine. Make code. Controller. Where's my syntax error there? Two, six. Can't assign to true. Yeah, I don't want to assign to true. <laughs> um, oh, let's try that. Let's try actually calling a method. Okay. Different syntax error. Great. Um, cool. Expecting that. Same thing, right? Is it? JWT double colon. That's what it is. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Invalid token. <laughs> um, 
Okay, cool. That just means that uh, it is not. Yeah, uh, it's not skipping the create for some reason. So. Um, have we let me clear this out and hit it again just so we can see more clearly. Um, so there's our parameters. Username, password, filter, user, can verify CS. What does that mean? Oh, that's our token, yeah. Uh, invalid authenticity token. Do, 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 do. So it shouldn't be checking for a copy. I'm going to pop that out just to make sure that that's not it. I think that's not it. Yeah, uh, where's my other one off to right. so find in users controller? Great. Yes. Cool, good. So not our token that's messed up. Um, all right, all right. So where are we missing here? Can't throw far off after Kidding, master plus users create. Um, let's go ahead and do some debugging here. A line there. I'm just gonna do um, let's see, zero frames. I think I think it's getting that far. Mm, users control create as that. It's not. What am I? What am I missing here? I can't verify. Let's Google it. Mm -hmm. Browser. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Browser press. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I want to tell it it's a, uh, oh, I should say API only there. Hmm. <laughs> I don't necessarily want to deactivate this key for action. That, is that what I want to do? That seems drastic. I think that'll fix it, but I'm not sure that's what I want to do. Feels like a sledgehammer. Okay, great. Uh, different error. I'm not happy about that. I'm going to go back and see if I can do a better fix. Um, or did, I, did I just mess up creating the application? Is it the typo on line 13, maybe? Um, on this one here? Uh -huh. Oh, look at that, stat -ed. Um That's not it, but that's a good catch. Um, yeah, so basically it's, so CSRF protection is, uh, cross-site scripting protection that Rails automatically happens. Cross-site scripting is basically when one site tries to kind of pretend that they're you with JavaScript trickery to bypass some security stuff. Um, and so there are things in place to prevent that by default. API shouldn't have that because by nature, they're going to be hit by another um, domain, basically. Um, and so I, this should have been hooked up. I did, I generated with that dash API only. You, right? you, you did API only. I did API only, not API. API only is for a different backend system. It should just be API. So there's probably other stuff that's broken there too. Um, probably the, um, in my jump on, I bet the, uh, but the chorus stuff is not hooked up either, right? Well, we'll see that when we get to it. Um, so basically, yeah, I mistyped it when I generated. So make sure you uh, do that right. Is that wrong? Like I did. Um, but that should take care of that for now. I can probably go and do a more subtle fix in a little bit. Let's see what our new error is. Uh, we need to uh, undo that. We need to look at that. Okay, cool. I think that's right. I missed it. 
not created. Yep, that should be a. Is that what you're trying to point out there? One more typo. And again, hey, fail to create user. Great. Different error. Um, cool. That's good news. So fail to create rollback. Mm hmm. So uh, here's so here's what I'm passing in. Uh, username Mark. I'm not passing in a password. Is that right? I'm passing in a password. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Oh, user params is not giving me the password. Why is it not giving me the password? Why is username not giving me that password? You definitely do want a password when we create it. Um, what are we missing here? Yeah, let's see what it is. And let's... I'm sending username, password, and name. Uh, it is getting, here are my params that it's getting, and here are the params it's putting out. Uh, username, password, name, all the other stuff. User, 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 user. So it is returning that user. Here's the username, username, that. Why am I not getting my password back? Is it part of the... Hmm. Is a part of the built-in uh, thing thing. User and password created. That seems right. Why am I not getting my password back? Hmm. Feels like it's part of the um, has secure password stuff. So I'm not getting my password back. Getting the user. Oh, because I'm not passing it. Whoa, that shouldn't be working at all, actually, right? Because it is looking for a user object. So I documented incorrectly. Um, this should look like this. Right. Mm -hmm. I think that fits right user. It looks like that. Okay. I think that's because we're requiring a user object and then we're permitting stuff inside that. Um, yes, yes, yes. I don't know why I put it in there, though. That's kind of gross. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Hey, different error. Cool. Uh, name error. User, user, status created. Uh, did the same thing over here. Created. Feeling pretty good about this now, though. Nope, different one. Okay. Um, what do we got? Got the password. That's good. Uh, the password there. Okay, that's good. Okay, let's get rid of this. Now I'm sending the right stuff in. So we look at more clearly. Cool. So I am getting my username, name, and password. Fantastic. Um, it is doing a create with those params. And then it is that user is not valid. Why not? Um, selecting did I or do I already have my, um, did it try and create that user already? And saying, no, thank you. Hey, yeah, that was it. Uh, so that already is. So um, probably don't want all that. So let's pass back our, um, that. Let's use our serializer. So just like we're doing here, uh, where is our serializer? Mm, so many things. 
Uh, that was hot controller, I think. Yeah. So same as we're doing here, uh, we want to return that, not with at user, but um, JSON user is going to be that. Cool. So we're going to use that serializer uh, so we don't send back everything because we don't want the, we just want name. Da, da, da. Um, yeah, we don't need a lot of stuff just yet. So let's make major three. Nope. Uh, user, user. Nope. <laughs> let's only put one key in there. I love that. I'm I'm worried about it creating usernames that are bad uh, when it has an error. Serializer, really? Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't believe you. I don't believe you. Uh, active model serializers. I don't think I did. Did I? A problem with doing that by hand. Nope, I did. I did mean serializer. Um, that's kind of gross. User, user serializer, name user. I feel like that's right. Or else disagrees. Hmm. New. That feels right. I don't know why that would bomb out there. That's awful. Um, am I just doing that completely wrong? Uh, how to write custom serializers in Ruby and Rails. I think I'm doing that right, but I feel like it's not right then. Um, do, 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 da, 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 da. I thought you had to call like, send like return the JSON as the user and then like you had the status and say comma serializer oh. serializer, I think. Serializer, maybe. Let's try. Serializers are the worst and I always forget. Um, user serializer. Maybe let's find out. Mm -hmm. Nope. Oh, probably because it's an existing user. Yeah, doesn't like that active model serializer. Active capital M. Do I just not know how to make serializers anymore? Did you not install the active model gem at all? So I think I, when I remember when we had to set up our projects for last phase, it made you require the active model serializer. Because active model wouldn't, none of the other stuff would work if active model wasn't there. Um, but yeah, maybe the, anyway, I'm not going to mess with serializers right now. That's too much for me. I'm just going to, I'm just going to return the whole user for now. Um, cool. Blam. So uh, pretend the serializer works. I'll figure that out later. Um, so we've created our user. We are uh, we have a digest, and this is the important part here. Um, but we've created our user, so we are going to get that back when we log in. So uh, password is one two three for all of them. Let's see. I'm just going to get rid of that serializer in the other place too. Mm. Uh, it, it, you did have to add the serializers in separately, I think. Oh, really? Yeah. In gem file? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, when we were setting up, it had, a had us run bundle add active model serializers. Weird. Well, let me do this gem. Um, active model Serializer or is it a... um, there's underscores between active mod active underscore model underscore Ruby always with the consistency. Z. Nope. Add us using bundle add. I don't oh, know. Maybe I do gem. Oh yeah. Let me just add it in the file. <laughs> oh, bundle add. Yeah, that would be it instead of. Um 
One more time. There we go. Okay. Maybe we can actually do our uh, control here. Yes. I guess both will work. Um, let's create a new mark. And let's start at the server. Hey, look at that. Fantastic. Okay, everything's perfect again. Created our user, got our name back, didn't pass our thing. Fantastic. So uh, now we will use this user that we created to log in. Let me update my documentation. Uh, so to create a new user, we want to create a user. Yes. Cool. That will get you what you want. Um, login, but we have the same thing, right? Uh, login is going to require a user with username and password. So let's make that work. Cool. So this is what our JSON going in looks like. Just to verify, I'm going to copy paste that into my request. This is going to be login. It's going to be my data. User is major six. Password is one, two, three. Uh, not one, two, three, four. That's my more secure one. Um, cool. Let's take a look at what that looks like. Please log in. <laughs> um, probably want to skip that action in there, right? Uh, skip for action before action authorized. It's my application controller, my auth controller. That inherits from application controller, so we don't want to um, double check what we got here. Auth controller. Um, skip before action. That's what I want to do. Um, authorized. Oh yeah, authorized would be good. Um, and um, for create, cool. Uh, so we're skipping the authorization. <laughs> we don't want to be uh, authorized when we create one. Well, did that uh, create a uh, session? Create an auth. We get it. Hey, there we go. Worked the first time. Second time. Um, so cool. We sent our user over with our uh, information to our login route that took that, uh, went through the whole rigmarole of authenticating that and creating it. Um, we have our user and token in our um, class now if we need it. I don't think we do. But more importantly, our client now has our key. And so this is what our JWT, our Java web token looks like. So we will be sending that back with um, with requests that need it. Um, what does that look like? With our auth, uh, we are going to do a bearer token uh, enabled. Our token is going to be, nope, not that. Token's going to be that. Um, I don't think it needs a prefix. I'm not sure. Let's see. Um, well, we don't have a route that needs it yet, though. So basically, when we send a request over, we're going to be sending that token over. Uh, it's going to well, let's make a let's make a route that actually needs it. How about that? Um, so in our route, cool, 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 cool. Let's do a. Um, Let's just do a user info one. Uh, create, um, not index, uh, show. So in our users controller, show, and we're just gonna get the user info and send it over. Um, yeah. Find my ID, and that's going to be um, 
Oh, now that we have our, we are logged in. So in our auth controller or in our, um, where are we? In our application controller, when we log in, uh, in our application controller, when we log in, uh, we're gonna get our token. Um, we have logged in. Have we logged in? We haven't logged in yet. Let's log in. That, yeah, we logged in. And past lunchtime, <laughs> brain is low on sugar. We've logged in, we've got our token. That means that uh, our current user is stored in a class variable in user, which is hanging out. Um, so we don't actually need to do a find by anymore. Our user should be there already if we're logged in. Uh, so I'm going to say user. Uh, I'm going to say user. Um, so since we threw that user in our class, in our controller, uh, when we logged in, that user and all its information should be there. So um, yeah, let's just do a show. So this is going to be a route that looks like uh, right now. We're just going to do a get user. Um, show, it's going to be show, right? Hmm. I'm just saying get user. I was going to get the one user. Oh, or comment user. Uh, and it's going to look like this. It's going to look like the user. It's going to look like this. Oops. That's cool. cool. So we're just getting the user back when we get it. So let's see what that looks like. Um, so this one, uh, we are not skipping the authorization. So we've logged in. We have an authorization token, and we're going to send that token over. And here's where we're going to see if anything else works. Uh, bearer is enabled. It's got the token. Great. So we're just going to do a get to user, is it user or users? Users, users. Let me put the route in and we'll find out. Uh, I did that, show, users, great, it's gonna be users. And my readme users, Ugh, I wanna change that, but I'm not going to right now. Um, and we're not sending JSON because it's a git. I feel like that's all we need. Let's see how it breaks. Great. Um, get users ID. Mm, no, it doesn't, it doesn't. I'm just gonna do this route explicitly. Uh, I'm gonna make it me, like that. This, me. Users show. I think that'll do it. Let's try this again. Please log in. Aha! I am logged in. Here's my here's my token. So let's see what is not working. Here's the debugging part. Application controller. So um, I'm going to uh, put. Well, we know we're not logged in. Uh, I'm gonna say puts. Let's see there, I'm gonna do a. Um, mm -hmm. uh, okay. Uh, that's there. Oh, there's our bear. So we are getting it there. Um, off header, great. Cool. That should give us more information to go on. Let's hit that again. See what we get. All right. Uh, so we are getting a interesting uh, users. Nothing. Current user is nothing. Clear one more time and see. I don't believe any of that. 
<laughs> it's like it's doing that a lot. Um, cool. Render dark trailer, train halted. So here is our bearer. There's our mother. That's our token. Um, one more time. Ooh, thunder. That feels like it's hitting it too many times, and I'm not happy about it. Um, so it's getting our token all right. Let's get rid of this. Better. So it's getting our token okay. There's our token. Um, I guess it's not decoding our token okay, because our decoded token... backwards. Decoded token is nothing. Nothing. It's nothing between us two. Oh no, this is our token. Oh, what's a, why is it doing that? Okay. Um that's our token. Decoded token. Right, 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 right. Okay. So you've got our token, okay. Our decoded token looks like nothing cool. So it's not decoding it right for some reason. Um, using our secret, using true. Hmm. So somewhere, this is where it's breaking. Decode our token with our secret. Um, did I paste the token in right? We'll never know. Uh, I can actually go back and do our login, right? Uh, login. Oh, JSON we had before. Cool. Let's do that. Send. Cool. So this is our token. Does that match uh, with what we expect here? Or actually, does it match with what we sent? Okay, that is our token. That's the right one. Seems. Got the dots in the right places. There's a dot there. The dump there, QI, yep. Cool, so it's getting the token all right. Um, why is it not decoding our token? Good question. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let's, let's do some research. Uh, JWT, Rails, not decoding. Mm -hmm. uh, Mark, when we're when we're running the decode um, or the token, we're splitting on white space. Does it need to be that first period in the token instead? This is uh, actually splitting out the uh, token from the bearer part. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So this is getting the the token part is the so the header the authorization header is bearer space token, and so we're just grabbing that token part out. Um. Yeah. So we can see our token is. what we expect here. Get me a bearer root. So yeah, so we're getting the token that we're expecting here. Looks like that, yep, that matches up. So the token is the one that we're getting. Decoding secret true algorithm. Mm, doo -doo -doo -doo. Hey, look at that. <laughs> Um, 
I wonder if it's using a different algorithm going in. Maybe that's it. Um, let's just do it bare and find out. That's it. I'm going to be mad. Uh, here we go. That was it. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, we didn't explicitly give it that algorithm on the way in. I think we were assuming that was the default. It wasn't. Um, so cool. Leave the algorithm off um, or specify it if you want. Um, but look at that. We did it. Um, yeah. Send our token up. Uh, so we sent our token as the bearer here. Uh, don't need that for a get. So step by step, one more time. Let's go from, from our route in. Uh, so me is going to users show. That's just a get. Uh, user is, uh, since this is not authorized, um, we're going to go, or it's not only create, it's going through authorized, which is living in the application controller. Authorized is that, um, that it gave us our current user here. Let's see. Yeah. Um, great. So authorized is saying, uh, are we logged in? Cool. Logged in is saying, do we have a current user? Current user is saying, um, get that token, getting the token from the bearer, from the authorization header, splitting that out, decoding it. It's returning the decoded stuff. Uh, user ID is in that. User ID is six. Uh, so it's doing a user find by that, returning that to current user. That's turning it to true and setting uh, here. We're setting our user to a uh, class variable so we can use it later. Logged in is great. So authorized passes. User controller goes to show, renders out JSON, our current user. And there we go. So, um, woo, did we do that in under two hours? Just a little bit. Um, so that's an example of some of the troubles you'll come across when you're doing this for the first time in several months. Um, yeah, so this is the basics of it. Um, feels complicated, is, it is complex. There's a lot of moving pieces, but it's pretty straightforward once you get into it with the JWT encoding and decoding. As we saw, there's a bunch of uh, little bits and pieces that, uh, yeah, that's, that's what I wanted. I wanted the algorithm there. Um, lots of bits and pieces to break and fall apart. And uh, if you're doing it by hand, like I do, lots of typos. Um, but yeah, live decoding or debugging, uh, that's how you do it. So we have completed this part. We have, from scratch, made a repo for our back end. Uh, we haven't touched the front end yet. Um, Ooh, don't want to do an example of that. I'm going to save the front end example for another bit. We've been here for a long time already. Um, that should be a shorter one. So maybe let's, what's on the calendar for tomorrow? Mm, nothing. Great. So um, tomorrow morning, I'll do a React front end hookup of this. Um, but should be pretty clear if you're familiar with doing stuff with fetch. The only thing that's different is sending that token in and uh, you basically just send that authorized bearer in with um, looks like, uh, where are we here? Uh, I can paste you a little example if you want to here. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe, yeah. So basically when you're doing a fetch, uh, we're just setting uh, so basically we're doing a fetch and when we are doing the headers we are putting in an authorization header just like in our uh, test thing here uh, bearer is the first word and then you put your token in when you log in you get your token back in your json and you stuff it in local storage so you can use it later um, I'm going to send you a, a repo with a built out front end and back end. Um, that should, I think there'll be some bugs in the back end, uh, but that should give you a general idea. Um, play would, with it. Would you little. mind, would you mind uh, pushing this up to GitHub as well? So yeah, we absolutely. Can bare bones. Awesome. Absolutely will. Yeah. Um, let me do that right now, actually. Uh, get... Cool. 
So that is in uh, Mark Major FFV backend. Uh, should be my most recent repo. Um, yeah, I'll uh, I'll send you some. Uh, I'll send you the one that I was working off of um, that uh, I put together that a coach updated that another coach put on GitHub for everyone to use um, a while back. So uh, I'll give you the repos that I was working off of that have like the full front end and back end template. Um, you have this one here at uh, github.com, Mark Major, FFV backend. And um, yeah, I encourage you to play with this a little bit. Um, see if you can get the front end hooked up. Uh, I'll do a front end demo tomorrow morning. That should be much shorter and answer questions. And yeah, I'll be here to answer questions all day as we go along. Um, but yeah, do folks have uh, thoughts, comments, questions about what we've got now? A lot of stuff. Um, just a quick question about, do, would it be possible if like tomorrow we could also go through like hosting these duo uh, repos, like how to get that connected with uh, Heroku yeah. tomorrow, yeah. like after we do the front end demo? If that's a, yeah. yeah. Um, just a little bit <laughs> confused on how to get that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, since the, the front end stuff should be pretty short, I'll do a demo on that too. Um, I'll also send you a, I don't know how useful it's going to be. I have another video where I did a Heroku thing. Um, it might be more babbling than actual use, but I'll, I'll send it all so you can <laughs> so take a look. Um, yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. And you said you're going to post the, the front end and the back end that are working just to the channel or whatever? Yeah, yeah. Um, those are going to be, uh, Dane is one of our awesome old coaches who uh, left to get a real job, um, but he put together some really good resources uh, that I still use to this day. So yeah, I'll post that to the channel. And um, yeah, other questions? I have one more question for you. So like when we're building out the back end, should we not, so when we say like Rails new API, should we not do the only? Yeah, API only is for Express. Um, so don't do not do it for Rails, it's just API. Okay. Yeah. And then the minimal, can I also do that as well? Or is that? Uh, for the what? Um, so you can say like Rails new API minimal. Um. What does minimal do? I don't know. It's like a minimal version of a Rails app. Oh. I don't know. That's just what was in Canvas. Yeah, maybe. Uh, I don't think I've ever used that. OK. Uh, skips all the frameworks. Oh, yeah. So it gets rid of all the stuff that we are not going to. Yeah, uh, go for it. That sounds great. I've never used that. I'm happy to uh, discover that. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Do that. Um, cool. Yeah. Other questions? Awesome. Uh, yeah, give the stuff a shot, play with it, wrestle with it, ask questions in the channel, um, and we'll do some more tomorrow. Sound good? Yeah, thanks so much for doing this, Mark. This yeah, awesome. thanks for hanging out and asking good questions and catching my bugs. <laughs> this made me hungry. Like, I don't know if it was just sitting here for so long or thinking, but I'm like starving now. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> yeah, definitely time to get up from the chair after yeah, this. Super low blood sugar right now. So yeah, uh, I'll post this video uh, usual places and uh, we'll see y'all in a little bit. Thanks for hanging out.